Hello friends! Do you really know the true meaning of the New Covenant? Do you really understand what it stands for, its significance, and what it means for us today? Are the things that your pastor or church leaders teach about the New Covenant square with the truth found in the Bible? Now, you might be shocked, but there are actually a lot of misunderstandings and wrong teachings about the New Covenant. And these things are sadly prevalent today. Just to give you an idea, let me give you a really quick test. You simply have to answer true or false. Here are the statements. Number one, true or false, Jesus fulfills the law for us so we don't have to keep it anymore. Number two, the law of God is for the ancient Israelites and now for the Jews. Number three, the law of God is for the people who are under the old covenant. Number four, the law of God is a burden and a curse. Number five, Jesus is the end of the law. Number six, keeping the law of God is trying to earn your salvation which should only be a gift. Number seven, keeping the law makes you legalistic. Number eight, keeping the law is earning salvation through your effort. Number nine, we are saved by grace and not by works. Therefore, there's no need for the law. And number 10, all we need is love and we are free to define what love is. Now, this might shock you, but none of these statements are true. They are all actually false. I know this might sound absurd and even difficult to believe, but hear me out for a bit because what I'm going to share with you today is going to help you discover Bible truths that you have never heard from mainstream Christianity. I want to challenge you by applying the instruction of the Apostle Paul written in 1 Thessalonians 5.21. It says, Test all things, hold fast what is good. That's why I want to offer you a free digital book that will help you better understand what the New Covenant is really about. The title of the book is The Shocking Biblical Truth About the New Covenant. Discover the life-changing teachings you don't hear in most Christian church today. Currently, the book comes with 24 chapters packed with powerful and compelling truths about the New Covenant. Here are some of the lessons you'll learn from the book. Number one, the difference between the New Covenant and the Old Covenant what it means to be under grace and not under the law, what is the greatest misconception of most Christians about the New Covenant, how the New Covenant actually established God's law and not abolished it, what was really nailed to the cross, what is the curse of the law, are we saved by faith or by works, the role of the Holy Spirit in the New Covenant, and so much more. As you can see, there are just so many fresh insights and concepts you'll learn from this book. The most important part of it all is that you will learn these things based on the Bible and not based on the teachings or traditions of men. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 tells us that the God of this age, which is Satan the devil, has blinded the minds of the people. Thus, it shouldn't surprise us if the majority of Christians today believe things that are contrary to the Bible and what it really says. No one is even bothered to ask whether what they are being taught about the New Covenant is correct or not. Most Christians today blindly follow blind leaders. Sad to say, without the correct knowledge, many will fall down the proverbial ditch. So, Christians predominantly believe that we are now living under the New Covenant. Thus, it follows that we don't need to follow the Ten Commandments given in the Old Testament. In short, the New Covenant abolished God's commandments and laws. Now, think about it for a second. If the New Covenant abolishes God's law, then it follows that there might be something wrong in God's law for it to be eliminated, correct? Well, a lot of people think that the law of God is harsh, unfair, and even irrational. Now, if the fault was in God's laws, and it was God who gave it, 
then the fault must have been with God. Christians won't readily admit it, but that's actually what they are doing today. They are putting the blame on God. They feel that God's laws are irrelevant, unrealistic, and disposable. God gives us laws that are impossible to keep, and thus, God should simply throw them away. To make things even crazier, a lot of people teach and believe that Yahshua or Jesus Christ came to earth to destroy and render useless his father's law and teach that Christians are free to do whatever they please as long as they love one another. Now that's totally absurd teaching, don't you think? If there's no law to outline what love is, then how can one know what love is? How to demonstrate love and how to express it? After all, love can be different from one person to another. If the new covenant abolished God's Ten Commandments, then does this mean that we are free to steal, kill, commit adultery, lie, dishonor our parents, and do other things that the Ten Commandments forbid? Well, most Christians would say no. They would argue, we only follow what was repeated in the New Testament. So they would accept every single one of the Ten Commandments except for one. Do you know what that is? It's the fourth commandment, the Sabbath law. Yet, if you read through the New Testament, you will find the word Sabbath mentioned more than 50 times. So, what is it really that Christians hate about God's law? We need to ask, why do so many Christians would love to believe that the New Covenant abolished God's law? Let me present to you two possible reasons. Number one, we are carnally minded. Most Christians today are only Christians by name. There is no real conversion. Some hardly open their Bibles, let alone join church services. If they do, they only do it for at least one hour in one week. So how do you expect the Word of God to transform their lives? As a result, most Christians would choose the easy road that is supposed to lead to eternal life. And what road is it? The road of not doing anything, but just believing in Yahweh the Father and Jesus Christ. That's perfectly what the popular but misleading New Covenant teaching upholds. Here's what the Apostle Paul wrote. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. That's Romans 8 verse 7 to 8. Did you catch that? The carnal mind is enmity, an enemy against God. It means that if we don't convert our carnal mind, the default setting would be to seek the easy way out. Because a lot of Christians today are carnally minded, they don't want to be subject to the law of God. As a result, they would rather believe that the new covenant abolished God's law. Number two, Satan deceives the whole world. Satan's deception has made it a lot easier for the New Covenant myths to dominate the mind of Christians. We read in Revelation 12 verse 9, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Please read that again. It says Satan deceives the whole world. Not just a part of it or a portion of it, but the whole world. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 even adds that the God of this world is no other than Satan. He is even called the prince of the power of the air, as we read in Ephesians 2 verse 2. That's why it is not difficult to see that modern Christianity today, with its 2 billion adherents, could easily be wrong in the majority of teachings they hold. That concludes the New Covenant teaching. Don't be surprised if one day we'll stumble upon the truth and see that modern Christianity today is diametrically opposed to Christianity in the first century. So where do we go from here? There's only one thing you and I should do. Discover the truth. And that's precisely what we will do. 
In today's program, I want to invite you in requesting your free Bible study guide, The Shocking Biblical Truth About the New Covenant. In this booklet, you will discover the truth about the New Covenant and how these truths have been twisted by so many Christians today that it made their faith shallow and superficial. Most importantly, the truth you're about to read in this book will dramatically change the way you think about the law of God and know why you should still keep them. Once you have downloaded the digital book, before you proceed, please pray to Yahweh that He will open your mind, give you a willing heart to yield to His will, and guide you to all His truth. To learn more, I have included the download link in the description box. So friends, don't waste this golden opportunity to learn more about God's truth and His way of life. You are about to begin your amazing journey to properly understand the new covenant. With that, I want to say thank you for joining us today. I'm Joshua Fantado of Becoming Christians Academy, praying that God will bless us with His love, truth, and grace. See you next time.